Oi, oi, it's your boy, Slacky J, dropping in on uh, midweek. What are we, Wednesday? Thursday? Whenever you're listening to this. And we're going to be talking about lots of stuff today. I held off on Monday because while I did watch the Bellator event that happened and um, some of the PFL, I didn't think it was super... Some of it was interesting, but I don't think it was super useful for me to talk about it like it was his own podcast because just no one's going to tune in for that and then I'd be left sort of wondering what else to talk about on that podcast because you know it, it, some stuff happened but very little stuff really happened and then wouldn't you know it the uh UFC and WWE did a merger <laughs> so, like the biggest news in the history of this sport happened um so we got that to talk about I'm still wrapping my head around that so just you know be aware not a big business head the extent of my being a business head is looking at one's financials and going, no, doesn't make sense still. <laughs> um, but it is the story that's chewing up all the all the uh, column inches. I probably made the mistake of reading the Endeavour press release first because that, that explains, it's like, what is the WWE? And, and so on like that. And then just goes into saying like, Vince McMahon said, that as this company has over a billion fans worldwide. And I went, no, it doesn't. Starting off with a lie, very strong, very Vince. Um, but this is a really interesting situation. Um, I think it's more about the WWE than it is about the UFC. I think it's more about the WWE and Ende and Endeavor, the parent company of the UFC, uh, their debt situation. I don't know how much this will actually affect the UFC. Some people have thought, hopefully, it moves them away from the pay per view format which everyone fucking hates but the UFC makes a lot of money through pay-per-views and they they realized that well certainly in the in recent years they realized that a lot of people are pirating it a lot of people in other countries are getting it through uh, you know various cable deals or through an app I get mine through BT Sports uh, in uh, is it Satanta you use in in some of Europe and then uh, Eurosport and all sorts of other stuff so there's you know everywhere else in the world the UFC has a TV deal. It's only Americans who they think are dumb enough to pay for pay-per-view. And fair enough. They, they appear to be right. Uh, some people are still not stealing this fucker. But WWE had a problem with declining pay-per-view buys and um, they switched to a, an exclusively online system whereby if you bought their... What is their network? I think it's just called WWE Network. But it, whatever their um, Fight Pass equivalent is gives you all the pay-per-views as well. And they used to do this advertising where, like, JBL, who's a massive twat, but uh, he, he used to talk about it on the broadcast and, like, make it out... Because you could still buy the pay-per-view or you could be uh, on the subscription service and he'd be there with his whiteboard just calling you an idiot for buying the pay-per-view um, because the maths worked out so much better, the money worked out so much better if you were just on the subscription service. I think the way that the world has moved, everything is a subscription service now anyway... Fight Pass would be a phenomenal subscription service if it included all the pay-per-views. But the pay-per-views are the heart of the grift at the moment. You know, we've got, when this was being rumoured, the day before, because the, the news dropped real quick. It was rumoured like the day before. And then the next day you woke up and it was like, fuck. Because it was also happening over Mania weekend, WrestleMania. Um, but when this was being rumoured, I just joked that the similarity of the companies was that they both have TV deals and make very little effort other than that. <laughs> but... Uh, I think the changes will probably come more on the WWE end, um, depending on how much of a firm hand Endeavour want to take, because what Endeavour does is come in, fire a load of people, and cut costs. We've talked about this before, but the only way that the UFC... The UFC is not growing. The only way the UFC is making money right now is by cutting costs and paying fighters less. They aren't interested in world fucking domination, or whatever they were talking about under Zufa. I think they are still technically Zufa. I think Zufa was sold with the UFC, but... Um, yeah, it's not that era anymore. They, they aren't like trying to build into Shanghai. They're not looking at the billion people in China and going, damn, well, we took China. They're just sort of half-heartedly talking about it, even while they have a Chinese champion. And the rest of the time, they're just trying to bring in as much regional level talent through the contender series as possible on very low contracts and hope some of them turn, in, turn into stars. In fact, it seems like they don't really want stars that much. But the WWE stuff, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how much the uh, Endeavour put their hand on the scale there. Part of it is the, the big shock that Vince McMahon is going to be back at the helm. 
Uh, he has had a couple of very interesting years where basically everyone knew he was a bad guy, but because he plays a, a heel on TV, he was sort of the lovable bad guy. And he was sort of eccentric. You know, there's all these stories about how, like, um, just what an eccentric man he is. He, he's, he thinks the funniest thing in the world is pushing someone in the pool when they don't want to be in the pool. <laughs> and he, uh, Jim Cornette tells this story about how, like, you'd take a meeting with him in his limo and he'd be gouging his face with an electric razor. He's a real germaphobe and he hates, or at least until recently, he hated facial hair. He's a super strange dude, and his relationship with MMA is extremely weird because he has always loved a genuine tough man. Uh, if you remember the Brawl for All, if you don't know, remember the Brawl for All, it was a tough man contest between WWF stars on WWF uh, events. So you're saying to the public, you know, even though it's sports entertainment with a wink, you're saying, yeah, no, these ones are real. <laughs> it sort of undermines your whole theatre. Uh, you, you know, you can't suspend your disbelief through the person telling you, no, this is real fighting now. Um, and he did that to get Dr. Steve Williams over, Dr. Death, because he was supposed to be a legit shoot fighter, and he ended up losing, and Bart Gunn went to the finals, and then after winning the Brawl for All, he got a fight with Butterbean, a boxing match with Butterbean at WrestleMania, got knocked out immediately. Um, but like Ken Shamrock, the, the world's most dangerous man, he was a, you know, he was a pro wrestler, he was an amateur wrestler, then he was a pro wrestler, and a pro wrestler he went through to Pancrase, which was... Uh, one of the first MMA organizations, guys who wanted to do basically real pro wrestling. And then he ended up in the UFC, and then he ended up in WWF. And Vince McMahon fucking loved him. Ken Shamrock's rivalry with, uh, rivalry with, with The Rock as he was surging up the card. Uh, really important for The Rock, and just a really uh, cool series of matches. But look at the success of, uh, of Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar went to... Um, pro wrestling because there wasn't big money in things like MMA. He was a very talented amateur wrestler. And um, then he went to the UFC, came back. His whole gimmick was like being a real tough guy. Kurt Angle. Yeah, so Vince has always loved a real tough guy. But then you've got things like he wouldn't let, allegedly, this is a CM Punk story, so could be completely fallacious, um, or rather a fucking lie. CM Punk wanted Chael Sonnen to walk him to the ring for one of their events and Vince McMahon was like, oh, that UFC stuff's too dangerous. It'll get someone killed, <laughs> which is such a weird thing to say when you're like, Mr. I love a real tough man. So it's all really weird. It looks like it was just to bring some... Basically, if you've been following any of the uh, McMahon drama, he is a sex pest or is an alleged sex pest. He pay paid a lot of women a lot of money back in the day to not talk about what he was doing as a sex pest. And... Um, some more of it was about to come out, so he moved away from running the company. And uh, for the last few months, or maybe a year, I can't remember how long it's been, but uh, Triple H, who, the, the ultimate backstage politicker, married Vince McMahon's daughter. Everyone was like, oh, he's just trying to move his way up. But really good at running the company, really good at like putting the creative stuff together. Whenever he's in charge of something, it comes off well. So everyone was like, oh, brilliant. Then he had another heart attack, and everyone went, oh, dear. And... Uh, then Vince McMahon has like maneuvered himself back into the top position, and this Endeavor buyout puts him just under Ari Emanuel, and then um, I believe it's Ari Emanuel at the top, Vince McMahon at the t uh, underneath him, but at the top of the WWE division. Someone else whose name I can't remember, who you know has always loomed in the background because Dana White is just the face of the UFC to take the heat for any stupid shit they do. But there's a guy above Dana, and then Dana's the next one down on the UFC side, and I think whoever's the next one down on the WWE side, but they're not actually, they're not, there's not a parity there. Vince McMahon is, is a level up from what Dana is on the other side. And for their board, they're apparently putting forward six Endeavor members or six Endeavor uh, nominees and five WWE nominees. The whole thing came out at either 12 billion or uh, 21 billion. I can't remember what it was. It was a huge amount of money it's, it's valued at. But the, the thing is that, you know, Endeavor is just going around accruing debt. They've got huge debts from buying the UFC that they're nowhere close to paying back. The interest on those loans is enormous each year. Um, so yeah, it looks like they're just sort of like it looks like they're just sort of making moves to keep the banks busy. But I don't know. You know, I'm not a big business head. I just can't see how this move makes them, um, you know, considerably more profit profitable than the WWE would have been on its own in a short space of time. But you know, half of this is just magic on the on the books. So. Um, We'll see. But in terms of like 
WWE influencing the UFC. Very interesting this week. I've seen a lot of people complaining that they'll be like seep over, uh, seep through. They'll be Colby Covington gets the title shot. Gilbert Burns is out there going, I deserve it. Teddy Long walks out and he says, yeah, you may deserve a title shot, but you're going one-on-one with The Undertaker. And, um, you know, that sort of shit happening. I think Teddy Long's dead now, so I don't, don't think that's a real concern. But at most, it's probably going to be like advertising for pay-per-views. I think they're smart enough to not mix their subject matter. Um, it, it has been weird watching people freak out about it, though. There's a there's a big Fedor pride head on uh, Reddit who is going like, oh, I hate WWE, WWF, it's fake bullshit, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, don't you really like pride? Because pride is like... There is a very clear through line from pro wrestling to pride. <laughs> it's not UFC influence on it isn't too too big. It's more Shuto and Pancrase, which are both heavily, heavily influenced by pro wrestling. Pancrase especially. Um, no to no pro wrestling, no Takada. Uh, all the stuff he did with UWF, with sort of shoot pro wrestling or shoot style pro wrestling, which developed into real MMA. Um, you know he sucked, but it turned out Kazushi Sakuraba, who was in his gym, rocked. And he gave us the immortal line, in fact, pro wrestling is very strong. If you aren't familiar with, you know, actually, with, this is going to be a Patreon boycast, but if I put this up as the preview clip or whatever, if you're not familiar with Kazushi Sakuraba, go look him up, because he's the, probably one of the most important people in MMA history. Back when Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was undefeated, he was a guy with an amateur wrestling background and some pro rest, some submission holds he learned from a catch wrestler while training for pro wrestling that was based on catch wrestling and he started submitting the gracies themselves so um yeah hugely important guy and undeniable pro wrestling influence on him but i suspect it's going to be more in the other direction it's just going to be everything in the wwe it's going to be plastered in adverts they're going to be shilling nfts even harder than before did you see the ufc is now putting your name on the canvas if you pay a thousand dollars that is grotesque um, this this is the company that said you had to have uniforms because if fighters had their own sponsors, it'd be like NASCAR. They'd just be sponsors everywhere. Can't even have those fucking banners that they used to have behind you when you were uh, get your, getting your name read out by Bruce Buffer. I just love that all this, uh, all the uh, promotional material put out by Endeavor and the UFC and WWE for this it mentions like what Endeavor does. It's a it's a sp- world leader in sporting leagues and so on and there's no mention of power slap and you know that Dana White just wants to talk about power slap and how it's actually you know nearly on a level with these things now has there ever been a bigger miss oh, I suppose the ultimate surfer which he also did or Art Davies X-Arm here's the thing some ideas are so simple that if you don't think of them someone else will and if you're the man on the spot and there's a demand for them you succeed like people locked in a cage using each martial art to fight against each other. Um, (laughs) Then having the idea to make arm wrestling into a tough man contest or trading slaps for uh, knockouts. Um, Yeah, you know, you weren't a genius when you came up with the first idea or bought the first idea. I think that's doubly funny because um, Shane McMahon wanted to buy the UFC back in the day. And again, Vince McMahon famously was like, no, someone will get killed. It's going to be a disaster. So anyway, we'll see what happens with that. How much of a big deal the UFC make out of it uh, on this pay-per-view card will be very interesting. They'll probably have some kind of glossy um, package just explaining what the WWE is to UFC fans. But I think they know that the fans don't want like interconnectedness of those two brands. But I say that, and then they've spent the last two months pushing Power Slap, and everyone has publicly told them that they don't want that. So anyway, this week, we've got a UFC pay-per-view. It's UFC 287, Pereira versus Adesanya 2, um, or Pereira versus Adesanya 4, depending on how you want to uh, work it out. 